So without wasting time, let's begin. In this video, I am going to demonstrate the ultrasound or dual guidance technique for subcostal approach of lumbar plexus block based on the shamrock sign. The patient is placed in lateral position with a slight forward tilt and the side to be anesthetized facing up. The ultrasound machine is kept in front of the patient and the performer or the anesthesiologist usually sits or stands behind the patient. The anterior thigh up to knee of the ipsilateral side should be adequately exposed so that the twitches of the quadriceps muscle or patellar dance can be seen easily. The depth of the lumbar plexus necessitates the use of low frequency and curved array transducer. Sometimes in pediatric patients, I use linear transducer. In dual guidance technique, a peripheral nerve stimulator with a current of 0.5 mA is used to identify and confirm the lumbar plexus element. We don't require higher current as we are not using the nerve stimulator here for localization of the plexus. A 100 to 150 mm 22 gauge short beveled, insulated and ecogenic nerve block needle is preferred for this block. For anesthetic block 0.375% or higher concentration and for analgesic block 0.25% or lower concentration can be used. For single shot lumbar plexus block 4 to 8 mg of dexamethasone can be used as an adjuvant. As the lumbar paravertebral region is highly vascular area, I always add epinephrine in the local anesthetic solution. Here, adrenaline acts as a vascular marker for early detection of intravascular injection and also delays the absorption and uptake of the local anesthetic. A volume of 0.3 to 0.4 ml per kg is usually considered for this block, but you can modify it according to the patient's age, comorbid conditions and the toxic dose of local anesthetic. The curvilinear transducer is placed transversely over the abdominal flank, immediately cranial to the iliac crest. The scanning technique is similar to what I have described in anterior QL block video. You can check out the details from the I button. I will also provide the link in the description and the comment section of this video. The vertebral level at which you are going to perform the block can be identified by midline scanning similar to the scanning technique for the neuraxial block. Once you identify the L4 transverse process and the vertebral body, then look for the QL muscle at the apex, swast major muscle anteriorly and the erector spiny muscle posteriorly. All these structures together form the pattern of a shamrock with three leaves and stalk or the Indian bell leaves. You can also remember these as the thumbs up sign where the thumb corresponds to the transverse process and the knuckles of the fingers forms the vertebral body. And the bunny head sign, where the ears of the bunny forms the transverse process and the head and face forms the vertebral body and the major vessels in front of it. The transverse process may act as a barrier during in-plane needling. Hence, once the sonographic pattern of the shamrock is obtained at the level of L3 or L4 transverse process, the ultrasound transducer is tilted slightly caudally as you can see here until the acoustic shadow of the transverse process is no longer visible. This view represents the anatomy of the lumbar plexus through L3, L4 or L4, L5 intertransverse space. By craniocaudal movement of the transducer, the course of the lumbar nerve root can be visualized as you can see here it is coming out from the intervertebral foramen. The lumbar plexus elements appears as a hyperechoic oval structures in the medial and the posterior part of the swas major muscle, typically within the distance of 2 cm from the transverse process. The needle can be inserted either from the flank close to the probe or at the capdevilla point or 3 to 4 cm lateral to the midline. The needle visualization as you can see here is better in the second technique because it is advanced perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. Here the challenge is to start with the correct puncture angle to retrieve the needle in the ultrasound plane. And second the dorsal branch of the lumbar artery lies close to the intervertebral foramen which comes in close relation to this needle trajectory. The shamrock method gives an excellent view of the lumbar plexus and the surrounding anatomy. Once you identify the sono anatomy, then switch on the color doppler or power doppler to identify the major vessels as well as the presence of vessels like 
dorsal branch of lumbar artery or ascending lumbar vein inside the swast muscle or at the level of intervertebral foramen and along the proposed needle trajectory. Once the intertransverse space view is obtained, a nerve block needle is inserted and gradually advanced in posterior anterior direction under real-time ultrasound guidance until the needle tip reaches close to the lumbar plexus element. Then the nerve stimulation is switched on to elicit the evoked motor response. The direct stimulation of the swast major causes hip flexion. The stimulation of the lumbar plexus elements will produce the quadriceps switch or the dancing patella. After confirmation of the needle tip position with the nerve stimulation, the local anesthetic is injected slowly in 3 to 5 ml salicut after negative aspiration for the blood and CSF. The oval shaped anti grade perineural spread of the local anesthetic is visualized in the swast compartment. Stimulation at a current lesser than 0.4 mA should not be sought because it may indicate the placement of the needle tip inside a dural sleeve. An injection inside this sheath can result in the neuraxial spread of local anesthetic. That's all for today. Catch you in the next video. Until then, keep blocking, keep rocking.